Yo, what is going on, everybody? It's Corrales here and Batman! Uh, anyways, today we are opening up a special pack packet coming all the way from Massachusetts. So this is from Simeon Cheese. Simeon Cheese! I don't know if you guys have been to their page. Um, I was watching this drop like crazy, personally. I was really excited about this one. It just looked like so much fun. And honestly, I feel as though when you go through their website, you're almost as if uh, you're in an arcade. You know, back in the day when you'd be in an arcade. Yeah. So, popping it open. Set it open. Now, of course, you guys, deck it down every time. Stickies. And I know that Simeon Cheese was saying that I was going to be getting some of the brand new stickies. So I'm going to pull all these out. Boom. Simeon Cheese! Worst toy design ever. So this is who did all the header for the um, Man of a Thousand Weapons. Many, many weapons. My bad. Boom. Some more Simeon Cheese. And actually, personally, I love this. I don't know why. I'm, I'm terribly, terribly allergic to bananas. And yet, I love anything that has to do with banana stuff. I think they do suspect I hate bananas so much that I love bananas. So worst toy design ever. Did that there. My goodness, you guys always go so hands. I'm gonna have a decked out vest pretty soon. I'm gonna look like Baba Drock between the Baba Drock pins and Simeon Cheese pins. Oh my goodness. And also I gotta point it out because I know you guys take a lot of effort in doing these kind of things. Um, this isn't like a standard pin where you pop the image in and, and press it. This is one of those fancy dancy acrylic pins. Ooh. Ooh. Thank you so much, Simeon Cheese. Whoa, I didn't know this was coming, so I'm gonna pull this. Sorry. I'm gonna raise everything up a little bit. I've got the camera a little bit high tonight, but I had no clue that this was gonna be in there, and I'm just loving the feeling of it. You guys know. Oh, you guys know I love this. I'm a toe. Sorry, I wasn't expecting that. It's um, it's like cashew rubber. Yeah. Yep. Kill me. You guys all remember that since uh, Trios of Horrors? Somebody kill me. Yep. Your buddy Crumbs totally does believe in reptile shapeshifters. I'm not going to call them overlords. The greys are overlords. The reptiles are here to inform us. So, and cool. Oh my goodness. Worst toy design ever. Boom. Right there as well. Boom. Barrel of monkeys. Worst toy ever. Sorry. Uh, barrel of monkeys from hell. Who doesn't love barrel of monkeys? And you know, obviously, I'm going to be zoning right in on it afterwards. But yeah, little barrel of monkeys from hell. And of course, Crumb's got to make sure that it's a good old resin. I don't know. They're the goods, buddy. They are the goods. Crumbs saliva. But yeah, barrel of monkeys from hell. Barrel of monkeys from hell. And I love too. Um, wait, I don't, sorry, the packaging is just nailed on that. Looks like some cedar wood. Okay, sorry guys. I'm diving deeper. I'm diving a little deeper. Uh, see what I mean about just like fun though? They just seem like so much fun. So personally, this seemed like so much fun to me. We're gonna pull it right open. The man of many weapons. So this is actually based after. Um, I'm probably gonna get everything totally wrong here. I. <laughs> The, uh, Gerald Oka, Gerald Oka Tamura. I'm so sorry. I got it because I just thought it looked like so much fun. I'm sorry. I know that specifically a lot of the times these things say not a toy, but the old crumbs doesn't know the difference between any of it. So for me, this just looked like so much fun. The header by worst toy ever. Now the figure itself was actually sculpted by, I'm gonna get it wrong, Rojo, the Rojo toy. Sorry, I had to double check because I, I knew it was the Rojo toy, but I needed to double check. So I'm going to pull him out. Oh, sorry. Look at that. So Rojo toy did the sculpt, and then Simeon Cheese did all the, the molds and the, and the casts and pulled these. And then, so, oh yeah, I'm going to pull it open. Show off all the weapons, or the arms. So, of course, because he's a martial arts master and a legend, he's trained and, and well-versed in every type of weapon. So in the back, there's these four holes, and I'm just going to start popping weapons into those hole joints. Boom, he's gonna have a sword. I'm also gonna give him brass knuckles. And personally, I'm a bit of a sucker for, for pink and, and blue. So I'm gonna pop them, oppose each other. Oh, yeah. Oh, like I was saying too, sorry. Um, back to how it just seemed like a lot of fun. Even the, the, the figure itself, it feels like I'm gonna be wrong here because I guarantee I'll get corrected. Hopefully I'll be able to sit down with him and he'll actually give me the full rundown. But it feels like Keshi and swords all the way. So this guy's gonna be coming at you with two blades at the head. And he's gonna be delivering some blows to the solar plexus with some brass knuckles and little jab stabs. Yeah, little jab stabs with the. And then of course, like there's two extra hands. He's got the uh, Vader choke slam, get in the face. Watcha, watcha, watcha. And then he's also got this guy here. Shocker, bro. Shocker, bro. So at the end of the day, buddy can go out at night and. And then in the morning, shaka, bro. So, oh, that's so cool. And then um, I'm gonna hold this really close while I get this figured out. There we go. So as I was saying earlier, the header card. There we go. I'll lower it a bit. Sorry, guys. 
Oh, came out of my jam today. Oh, there you have it. So not only does your figure get to stand with his weapons, but he's also got some more weapons in the arsenal as well. Isn't that just so cool? Sorry guys, I'm really excited about that one. Like, oh, that's just so neat. I need to make sure to hone in, go over that entire sculpt. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Little hand weapon details. Oh, and then you guys always blow things out of the water because oh, how could I have possibly known that this was gonna be in there? So there's actually a Rex No Do. Oh my goodness. This is what I was saying, right? You go to Simeon Cheese's page, and there's just so much there that just seems fun. Straight up fun. Like you're at the arcade or you're at the mall. You and your buddies get to go to the mall for the first time and it's summer and your parents aren't there and you get to go wild and you got a loony for the loony machine and you grab one of these because any other time your parents would be like, don't spend a loony. Don't don't be doing, but you're alone with the homies and you're like, you know what? I got change. I got change. And I'm going to grab some like homies and like all the little guns. So yeah, in my opinion, Simeon Cheese is just like rocking that whole like, oh, art should be fun and you should just... Oh my goodness, awesome, awesome uh, little Daves. And the Dave guys, I'll pull them up in an image so that way you're not just seeing me play with my toys, because that's all I'm doing now. I'm really now just playing with the toy. Um, I'll pull up the other sculptor or, or figure that he did, because it was sculpted by um, Simeon Cheese's son. And then Simeon Cheese did the mold and the casting for it. And I just think that's really, really, really cool code thing. So they're just like the, the little humans that some of you guys have in your lives. The fact that they're also creating is just so neat to me. So I hope you don't mind, I'm just playing with it. I'm even going to put this one, I know it's going to seem strange, but I'm actually going to put it upside down, so that, that way he's coming in for some full-on, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, this is a lot of fun. Um, I really hope that other people got one. Unfortunately, it's sold out now. So the fact that I'm, <laughs> the fact that I'm going so ham talking about it, um, and nobody can get it, I'm so sorry, because that is, like, one of the coolest things. Look at that. Cha, cha, cha. Shaka, bro. Lies. I'm going to get you. Sorry. Dude, Simeon Cheese, worst toy ever, killing it. Sorry, and the Rojo toy, I keep on gapping on that, I'm so sorry, but the Rojo toy, you nailed this. I mean, to be doing, that's the other thing too, right? It's one thing you're making one figure, but like to be doing all these different hands as well. And then I've got to give Simeon Cheese credit, man. Like how many molds do you have chilling around? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I love this dude. I wasn't even expecting this dude, but I love it. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Oh, good. Excellent, excellent, glad to hear it. Thanks. Staying alive. Yeah. Staying alive. <laughs> you know what, during the pandemic, uh, staying alive can mean a lot of different things, so I'm glad. <laughs> of course, I know who you are, but for all the, the fun recording purposes, you mind introducing yourself? I am Joe Martis, otherwise known as Simeon Cheese. Uh, just a guy, just a dude, making toys. <laughs> no, I'm going to ask, because I, I always like to know, where did Simeon Cheese come from? Uh, a lot of people ask that. It's a strange thing. Uh, so I'm really weird. I was born with a simian crease. I don't know if you see that. Yeah. Most people have two lines in their hands that don't touch or do touch. I just have one that goes straight across. That means you're autistic or have Down syndrome or like psychic or there's all these different interpretations of it. But it's basically a primal trait left over from the monkeys. Uh, so like monkeys have it, simians do, apes. Uh, and it left humans a long time ago, I guess, but somehow I got one. <laughs> so. I don't know, man, you know, Simeon Crease turned into Simeon Cheese. And then I thought, how fucking gross is that? Simeon Cheese, like cheese made from monkey milk? That's fucking disgusting. <laughs> and it just resonated, you know, it was like, that's it. So I thought of it like 20 years ago and, and it's just been in my pocket and I never knew what to do with it. And then I started making toys and there you go. You know, I was like, it was waiting for me. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm kind of curious when you picture cheese from a monkey is it like swiss cheese with little holes in it or is it like just like a big brick with like the white powder all over <laughs> no, i picture the full-on like swiss cheese roll uh, like wheel you know big holes and just just nasty you know <laughs> but you know, probably have to try it you'd have to try it right <laughs> if you market it as something like hulk milk 40 <laughs> um you know fat or something like that and there'd be all these guys are like oh yeah like <laughs> Of Simeon cheese. Right. Good. Monkey milk. <laughs> the point one percent that's not human. <laughs> Can you I don't know, dude. Brave you'd have to be to milk an ape. Like sorry. <laughs> but I mean that's a dangerous line of work right there. That's next level. <laughs> Let's say just do it voluntarily, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we need to do. We need to train all the sign language, get rid of all the other things we're training them to do. We need to just convince monkeys that that's what we need them to do for us. Right. 
Planet of the Apes was a big miss, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is where my mind goes, dude. This is how it starts. It's like uh, fucking this, Simeon Crease, Simeon Cheese turns into this, and I don't know, dude. And that's how you end up with five pages worth of worth of stock. <laughs> <laughs> I was honestly kicking myself even after we did the order, like because for whatever reason on that particular day, the web page only loaded up two of your pages. And I'm like, oh, he must have cleared out some of the older stuff. And then of course, like days later, you realize this is five pages, and you're like, oh, the derpy Dave, and like <laughs> and there's like all the other ones. You're like, oh, <laughs> how have you possibly amassed so much? Like, I'm just like manic, dude. I get in these phases where I just create. Uh, it drives everybody around me nuts. I just, I just, I just get in the flow, you know. It's like this, uh, this energy that just, it's just unstoppable. And I just create, create, create. And I usually just completely fucking trash my space. Uh, so it's like I haven't even really been able to get, get in here for a couple weeks because it's just been fucking trash, just covered in plastic and shit everywhere. Uh, and then I'll clean up and like, then it's a new day. And then I just start over and start cranking shit up. <laughs> So it's like I use these pauses of it's like, oh, it's too fucked up to get in there. It's like my break. Yeah. Uh, and then I summon the energy to clean it up and then I get excited again or something to click and I'll just get to it, you know. Uh, it's cool. I have a son, my kid, my oldest kid uh, is like really good at 3D sculpting and stuff. So I'll just throw something at him and he'll just sit down for like 10 minutes and sculpt something. Like Derpy Dave was my kid, just sculpted like five minutes. He's like, here you go. And I'm like, oh, fucking awesome. You know, so then I cast it up, printed it, cast it, sculpt it. So that's really cool, you know, to work with my kid, one of my kids. He's done a couple with you, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Yeah, he did the uh, the Akamura Screaming Hand, the Kung Fu Hand, he did Derpy Dave, he did uh, one I never released, look at it. Did this dude, kind of cool. Uh, based on a drawing by uh, a dude named Jason Coviello. Covello. Probably don't want to put that, probably said his name wrong. <laughs> He's a cool dude. <laughs> does your son actually, like, does he thoroughly enjoy like doing it or is it more one of those things that you kind of poke him and he's like yeah okay uh when he was younger it was like he was totally eager but now he's what is he's turning he's turning 15 in a couple weeks so now i gotta like poke him and prod him and remind him and you know he's a teenager so yeah when i was 15 i sure as hell wouldn't be doing that for my dad so <laughs> <laughs> no no definitely not but he's really good at it it's just like natural you know he just sits down and fucking just whips it out and it's like do you play with the uh, 3D graphics and the 3D printer at all? I print stuff, but I I try to do the, the creative stuff, but I just suck. I don't know, man. I, I actually, I went to school for art. I got an art degree and I like was an artist for a while. And then uh, then I got a job, I got like a desk job and to start doing other stuff and uh, like left art for a long time. I mean, it was always there, but, uh, but I wasn't practicing it on a daily basis. So, uh, but now I'm back, you know, it's been, been, I don't know how many years I've been doing it, but it's great to be back making art and being creative. And, uh, okay. yeah. um, how long have you been making like this form of medium of art? Because if you've done art before, had you been also making like figures and static figures previously as well? I was. I was making stuff out of ceramics though. I I, uh, I was like totally into ceramics. I'm like a I'm like a process guy. I'm like really technical. And when I was going to school, all I wanted to do was make shit. So I was like, I don't want to. I don't want to fucking go to math class. I don't want. I just want to make stuff. So at the time it was like, the only place to make stuff in school was art. So I was like, fuck, I'm gonna go go into art. And then I took an art class, I took a ceramic class. I was like, holy shit, you can sculpt with this stuff. And there's this cool process of firing and making clay and making glazes. And I got really into it. So I ended up getting a degree in it. I was like, I ran the ceramic studio for four years there. And it was like hardcore into clay. Um, but then I got out of school and without all that support of like all the money to fire kilns and have all the glaze and shit, it's hard, you know? Uh, so I started working as a potter, as a production potter. I was making like uh, 120 pots a day, just like a machine, just <laughs> cranking fucking pots out. Uh, so I just got totally burned out on it. <clears throat> and then it came down to like, I used to love the process, but then it was like, fucking this process sucks. You know, it's like, I gotta sit and wait for this clay to dry like carefully and catch it at just the right time. And then I gotta fucking, put it in this thing, expensive machine for 12 hours, get this, and I gotta fucking cool it, piss and do this. It's like fucking process is a burden, you know? And at the end of the process, I'm stuck with something that's around, you know, like the shit I made is gonna be around for like 200,000 years, you know? So I just, I just kind of got burnt on it, you know? Uh, 
I guess I kind of turned my back on it because of that. It was just too much. Yeah. Uh, so like I said, then I just I just kind of left art and got a job. Uh, so and then did that for like probably like 15 years until I started making art again. Uh, had a family, had kids and stuff, you know, so it just all it was all consuming. Uh, so yeah, I feel like the last five years probably I've been making stuff just for fun, you know, just just making shit, not selling anything, just making it, you know. Maybe I'm being presumptuous, but you must have a very good understanding then of a lot of the process and a lot of the um, alchemy that's happening when you're casting. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's just a much faster process and much less natural. I mean, one of the cool, one of the things that brought me to clay was, uh, you know, clay, you dig it out of the ground and it, it's it's an amorphous blob. It has it has no shape. It's just it's just waiting to be shaped by anything, by pressure around it, by weather, and you know. So you take it out and you shape it. Uh, but it's a fucking process. So uh, the, the plastics is cool because it's a liquid shit, and you mix it together, and then you can shape it into anything within minutes, you know. And Unfortunately, the permanence is like clay, where it's going to be around for fucking ever. But uh, so I'm conflicted about that. But uh, <laughs> so I try not to waste. You know, I try not to waste a lot of plastic. Uh, but that's what really draws me to it. Is that it's like it's this shapeless, this shapeless substance that's just like it'll take any fucking shape that you could possibly imagine. It'll do it. You know, and stay that way without putting in a kiln, without fucking. <laughs> But, but uh, like I said, the thing that really turned me on to clay in the first place was that process and was the chemistry and was the alchemy. I mean, I got deep into like formulating glazes and, and the math of it, and that was really cool. But eh, you know? <laughs> uh, so I really enjoyed the, the, the plastic side of it. Uh, I can literally start and finish a project in a day. It's like my, my silicones cure in like an hour and a half, so I can make a mold. I can make a complete mold in like two hours and be casting, like fucking cranking out cast. You know, my, my resin sets in like 20 minutes. So, you know, you're from concept to production in like a matter of hours, which is fucking crazy without a bunch of machinery and, and shit. You know, it's just start with a little piece of Sculpey or whatever. And a couple hours later, you're pumping out toys, you know, in all crazy colors and experimenting. And yeah, that's cool. I noticed recently you just posted the, the jar of all the helping hands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like you're saying, you just pump them out. Yeah, it's cool. Well, that guy, I made a mold of 10. So it's like I could do 10 at a time. So it's like, I could just crank them out, you know? <laughs> do you normally do a gang mold like that? No, this is really the first time I've done it because uh, they're so small. Like doing one at a time would just be fucking insane. Uh, you know, measuring out two milliliters of resin at a time is just, doesn't make any sense. So, and I, I just love like pouring them through my hands, you know, I just wanted to have a shitload of them. They're so colorful and so tactile and just like, I want to walk around and like throw handfuls of, throw handfuls of them at people. <clears throat> you know, I would love to do this, like walk down the street and just like pelt people with them. <laughs> like, have a good fucking day! <laughs> yeah, and? Yeah, right? Exactly, dude. <laughs> I'd probably go to jail for it, but uh, that'd be fun. Or like, uh, I was talking with a buddy last night, he recommended It'd be cool to just like hide them around town, you know, just like put them places and like post about it or something, let people find them. Well, I do find that's often interesting because a lot of people don't know about this whole resin world. And I often even kind of like to think of like what will happen when all of a sudden one day, you know, somebody's going through like a thrift bin or something, they come across a toy that they're like, what the right. is this? Right. Well, that's especially when somebody's gonna be sitting there being like, I didn't even know they made these. Right. <laughs> Right? Or a bootleg and they're like, holy shit, what is this weird rubbery color of this old toy I had, you know? <laughs> and well, and actually, I'm, I'm like about rubbery because this guy caught me by surprise. It's like a weird uh, oh, yeah. salamancer. Uh -huh. Did you, like, where did this guy come from? Sorry. Is he's like a weird rubber. Yeah, he's a, he's a sculpt by Charles Marsh, uh, Monster Forge. We started to do a series of toys together. We did one before that uh, named Timmet, who was like a little dude. But we made another little creature. There were like five of them and we started doing the series uh, and after the first one, the series kind of fell apart. So I cast the second one, It just we just never released it to market. And uh, I got that cool rubber and it was like, oh, it's perfect for that little frog dude, you know? <laughs> yeah, man. So you're the only one that has one. It's like, you know. Dude, I'm surprised you guys didn't make more of these. The rubber makes them a lot of fun. And like, oh, right. 
what is one of like your inspirations for toys? Like, what's, what do you kind of go towards? Uh, just fun, dude. I just want people to have fun. Uh, I only make stuff that cracks me up. Like, everything I make has to make me laugh, unless it's a commission. I mean, I do commissions, but the stuff that I produce, I, I really just do it for me. Like, I have boxes of shit that just never sold. I don't even care. You know, it's like, I made it for me because it fucking cracked me up and it gave me a good laugh for a few days while I was making it. Well worth it. Uh, working with my buddy <clears throat> Mario from Worst, Worst, uh, Worst Toy Ever Designed is just like, just like those kind of partnerships are just like, uh, I just can't even, I can't even put words to it. You know, it's, uh, that's what it's all about. It's just having that kind of fun with somebody in the process and then sharing that with people, like seeing your reaction to that little guy's awesome. That, that's why I do it. You know, it's just to make people smile and laugh and have fun and uh, weird. I like to make weird stuff. Just people say, why the fuck would anybody make this? You know, that's what I do. <laughs> I like to make stuff that's like, why the hell would you make that? You know? <laughs> when you brought up um, worst ever, worst toy ever or worst design ever, you seem to do a lot of collaborations in general, man. Like, how have you formed these, these relationships? Because not many people do as many collabs as you have. I don't know, just just through Instagram. Uh, I don't know, man. Just just having fun. I don't know. I, I actually don't even know. Sometimes I reach out to people, uh, like Rojo Toy. I reached out to him because I really dug his work, and uh, I just wanted to make some of his minis because they're fucking killer. Uh, other people have approached me, and I'm like, hell yeah, I'll do it. You know, I just like making stuff. Oh, he's cool, huh? This was one of the coolest toys I'd seen come out in forever, man. Oh, thanks, dude. Like. Back to the whole alchemy and chemistry. Huh? Like, oh, <laughs> you're like <laughs> you know, because you made him. This guy's almost like a rubbery, but not nearly as rubbery as this dude. Right, right, right. And then, of course, you've got almost like a hard plastic or a hard resin for the weapons. Yep. Okay, <laughs> how did you even decide to do that? Like, what was the, like, how did you guys, I understand you would have seen his sculpt, but how did you plan to execute that in such a perfect way that it would actually work like that? Well, I knew that they, uh, I had to find a way for him to, <clears throat> excuse me, I had to find a way for him to, to stay on. And, you know, of course, hard resin and hard resin is just, you're going to be grinding it in there and you're going to break them. So it just seemed natural to make a, a, a stiffer resin uh, Gerald. And then with the hard resin hands, you could do anything. You know, you could do any color, you could do transparent, you could do opaque, you could do glitter, everything, glow in the dark. So it just seemed like a natural uh, fit for the materials. Yeah, it's cool as hell, huh? Super cool. And like, you guys even crushed it with the card art. Right? Like, That's Mario. That's one of my favorite ones Mario's done. That's really good, huh? Man. He is so talented. He really, really, really is. And you guys just make a good combination. How did that relationship form, if you don't mind my asking? Like, how did you guys meet and start working together? We met through the Minifigure Militia, which is a, a Facebook group. Uh, I can't talk. A Facebook group. Uh, which is really awesome. It, it, it was the first Facebook group I ever joined. I never knew other people were into minis. Like I had just been collecting minis for years and you know, uh, you always hear like, you're not alone, you know, you're never alone. There's other people just like you. I, I, I just never thought there were. So I found the minifigure militia and it was like, holy shit, there's, there's thousands of people with the same figures that I have and collecting them and talking about them. And I got really excited. <clears throat> I got more involved in the group. Uh, and Mario was one of the, the people that was in it forever uh, as an admin and, and posting pictures all the time. And um, I think I did a, I did a, one of my first bootlegs was through the minifigure militia. So Mario offered to do the card art for it. And it's just been ever since we've been doing stuff together. It's like, I talk to him every day. It's like, he's one of my really good friends and he's in Italy. So it's a cool, it's really cool. It's been, uh, it, it's really, that group has really changed everything, it really expanded my knowledge. Oh. And then it's like Five Points Fest came along and and all of these little conferences and stuff <clears throat> start happening. It was like, holy shit, this is like a like a, a, a new a new art form is happening. This is like a new a new wave of art that's happening right now. <clears throat> you know, with the technology behind the plastics and the, and the like I mentioned, the speed of, of concept production, anybody can do it in the in their garage, in their basement, in their closet, and just like, just create, you know? And then you could you could sell it for a few bucks and make enough to cover your costs, so fuck it, you know? It's like a perpetual motion machine. If you can, 
I figure if I can cover my costs, I can keep making, you know? Like that's all I need to do is cover my resin and I'm good. Uh, and other people are finding that out and just creating. So it's like you go somewhere like Five Points Fest and you see just like endless rows of tables of just dudes just sitting there with, with killer shit that came out of their minds. And they're just, it's like, it's amazing. And over the years, it's just grown and grown and grown and grown to where now like people are doing like fucking NFTs and making thousands of dollars. It's like, it's crazy. So it is, I really see it as an art movement that's, that's gonna explode. Uh, and you're like you're like at it dude you're like in it right now you know you're talking to people that are that are making shit see it's always funny to me because it's it's like a total um symbiotic organism because with you guys are saying like it's really cool of you and i'm thinking, I mean, like these these artists who are trying to do all these other things they're juggling are willing to sit with me and talk to me about art like what right. you, you know and, um it, i do agree and I'm, I'm hoping that you're right there's about to explode because I think COVID definitely ignited like a strange thing. Because mm -hmm. um, you mentioned you've been doing this for about five years now, but I'm sure you've even then kind of seen in the last two years has been just a, a weird influx. It's like exponential growth in the amount of duties. Um, it seems like it's been elevated too. You know, it's like, I mean, you had a Dunny, you know, Dunny, Dunny kind of started as a platform, but it got interest. It got like New York Times. It got like, it, it got elevated to, to a level that, that toys weren't at before. You know, and it's like people like Suck Lord come in and like, fuck, they're on TV and like in the paper and like looked at by critics and stuff. So they've elevated this weird little niche craft into an art form. And I think, you know, there's, so there's, there's different kinds of people that are hopping on. There's like profiteers. I'm not saying that anybody is a profiteer, but there are people that are in it just to, just to make bucks. But then there's artists and crafts people that just like to make shit and they're in it just to make shit and now they're finally getting recognized and like getting an audience and and getting that feedback that hasn't been there before because now you, now with the internet and and audiences and instagram people see your shit you know you put it up and and people they go, eh, don't like it or they like it and they give you feedback which is really cool just to have that loop the instant feedback loop not that i change anything based on the feedback but it's good <laughs> it's good it's good to see you know <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. I think one of the biggest things often is just not feeling alone in the trenches. Because right, when you were mentioning when you found the minifigure militia, a lot of people don't find that minifigure militia. Right, right. And uh, I think especially during COVID, we're seeing a lot more dudes who are making. And it's hard because they're seeing from the sidelines, like they do see the suck words on TV and they do see, but then it's like, but trying to find their own place in. Right. Uh, right. So it's cool that there's a minifigure militia. And I think sometimes people kind of forget how important I don't even really know what to call them because it's not even as though it's like a it's not like a distributor. It, yeah. It's a community. It's a, yeah, it's a community within a community yeah. um, that's that's just geared towards a very specific taste of interest. Yeah. Whereas like you happen to have one of the OMFG ones right. store. So out of curiosity, how do you how have you found working with a community um, when when you're actually doing like a, a release or a, a product with them? It's great. Uh, with the minifigure militia, we have a team of like, uh, I think we're like five dudes. So we decide what we're going to work on and we decide the color and everything and, and uh, we produce it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's great. Uh, I don't really know what else to say. But... <laughs> I'll, be honest, I'll be totally honest. I didn't realize tell them, I didn't even realize how you guys operated. I didn't realize there was five of you that kind of brainstorm out what the next drops or releases will look like. Huh? Yeah, so it's interesting. We, uh, we started off, you know, Bill, uh, Bill McKay, I think that's how you say his name. Uh, he'll shoot me if I say it wrong. <laughs> Bill from the Minifigure Militia is the guy that started it. And uh, Pugnacious of o OMFG uh, is his. So he drew that and George Gaspar sculpted it. So Bill always wanted to do uh, 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 slime green, uh, Uzarian slime version of OMFG. So since he had the connection with George, we were able to do uh, the, the MFM exclusive uh, complete series of OMFG in Uzarian slime green. Uh, you know, we, we turned a little bit of profit on that, so we were able to just keep it going. You know, we did series what, three and then series two and, and able to just keep it going. And uh, so we're able to just kind of fund one project at a time. And now we're working on, uh, you know, the Pugnacious Sofubi, which is gonna come out within the next few months. So that's our new project. So we just try and always keep one project going at a time. If you don't mind my asking, who are you guys doing the Sofubi through? Uh, uh, Mile High Sofubi, he's creating it. Nice. Yeah. 
Made in USA, awesome guy. Yeah. Uh, and Bill is awesome. Bill handles all the logistics and everything. Nice. So, uh, yeah, it's fun. It's great that we're able to do these things kind of at production scale and uh, release them. Like the, the the tardigrades were really fun. Doing those with Doomco was great. Now, normally, will you guys have like one person send all the um, artwork and then somebody else sends like all, like all the sculpts and then they do a casting and then it leaves one home base? Well, all the, the OMFDs were actually produced in China. <clears throat> Since those were mass produced, uh, they were factory made in China, uh, you know, and then shipped over here and then we carted them and bagged them. Uh, the tardigrades, I think those are made in China too, uh, but those came from Doomco. So, you know, it's a whole supply chain. Yeah, that's a lot to keep track of. Uh, but, but with Bill, this one is a, a completely new toy. So, you know, Bill worked with, uh, with a sculptor to sculpt it in 3D and print it. And, you know, off to, to uh, Mile High Safubi where they're making the molds and casting it. And, you know, it's a crazy process, but it's cool to like to, to be producing a, an original an original toy, you know? Most of the stuff I do is bootlegs because I, I can't fucking sculpt. I mean, I, I do have an art degree. I have a degree in sculptor, sculpture, but I can't sculpt anymore. I don't know what it is. Like I said, I'm two in my head. Um, <clears throat> so it's cool to be actually producing a toy, like with a factory and it's an original. It's just a neat thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like maybe enlighten me a little bit on what that process looks like. I know you said Bill's kind of handling a lot of it. Um, but like you're involved in some way in like the production process of getting these all done. How does that even happen? Like what, what, is, what does that look like? Sorry. I, I'm honestly not even involved. <laughs> <much involved. laughs> you know, Bill, uh, uh, we, we kind of shopped around for sculptors and we, we picked a sculptor. We said, this guy's awesome. We love his work. Uh, Bill contacted him and, and they negotiated a fee and uh, you know, dude sculpted it up and showed us a bunch of revisions and we picked one we liked. and. I was like, made in the USA, you know, let's do it here. Mile High Safubi is the place to be, the place to do it. Help, you know, this is a small business. Let's get them going to help, do whatever we can to help. Uh, so Bill contacted him and has been working with him on tests and uh, all that kind of stuff. You know, we're picking an AP color and, you know, it's, it's fun. It's it's really cool to be a part of it. Uh, do you plan on doing them painted up, sorry? Maybe it's the AP color? Uh, who knows where it'll go, you know? I don't know. Yeah, I got I hope so. It'd be cool. Bill Cow. We we, uh, we each plan on, on doing a figure. So like Bill's doing his pug. I'll probably do I, I'm trying to find a sculptor for Simeon Cheese, uh, a monkey. Nice. You know, Mario wants to do something, uh, the other guys want to do something too. So we'll we'll probably rotate through each one of us and do a do a soap movie each. That'd be really cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> but like out of curiosity, because I gotta kinda ask, like where did the barrel monkey guys come from? Oh, he's cool. Those, that's uh, uh, that guy, uh, a company called HEI, Happiness Express Incorporated. They did this vampire series. I think it's from the 60s. Uh, and they're kind of rubbery. Like here's a, uh, that's one of them. I booted this one years ago. Uh, this is another one. It's like a Dracula in a coffin. I booted him too. And a bat, a Dracula dude. And then that guy. And then there's one more that I don't have that I've been looking for. When I get the complete set, I'll probably boot them again. It's so fucking cool. And they're hard to get. It's like stuff like this I like to boot because it's like they're impossible to get. And if you can find them, people are just screwing you on eBay for them. You know, like 80 boxes. It's like, dude, those, these were in a dollar store for like 20 cents. You know, now you're charging like 80 bucks. So if I can boot them and get them in people's hands, you know. And you just want to play with them too. If you're gonna buy them for a hundred dollars, it's like, eh. it's like, oh, you snap that in half, dude. I'll send you another one. That's like, <laughs> have you always been into um, toys, sorry? Yeah. Oh yeah, I love toys. I've always been into toys. Uh, toys are just fun, man. I moved around a lot as a kid, so I had a lot of toys, and I would, I would, every time we'd move, they would just like disappear. So it's, I never really, I never got to keep my toys, and. And now I like now I look back and I'm like, oh man, I had that. I just kind of forgot about them. You know, it's like I, I had all these toys and I moved and out of sight, out of mind. I guess I don't. Even... <laughs> I mean, the ones that I played with all the time, I kept, but some were like in boxes and and uh, nowadays I, I can I can find them at a thrift store or something. It's like a super nostalgic feeling. It's like oh, I remember that. You know, I remember that. And then it, then the memories come flooding back and uh, I don't know. I'm just ranting. I don't even know what your question was. <laughs> <laughs> I, I asked because if you'd always like toys, but 
you mentioned how now like you find them you have some very peculiar pieces i would <laughs> to say when you were showing off like your whole wendy's little line uh-huh. like man where do you even find these things exist because my brain doesn't even know half of these things like i didn't know there was a hamburger helper little hand line like well, the one of these things I found at a thrift store. A lot of stuff I just find at a thrift store or a flea market. Uh, some stuff I just like, I'll find in a box that I just had forever. <laughs> uh, the, the Helping Hand actually uh, was a, a project I did with uh, Illumina Toys, uh, uh, Midas Wilder, Cheap Toy Man. He, uh, he does video nasties. So he found, uh, it was like a brass, I think it was brass, brass or aluminum Helping Hand, that full size one and sent it to me to do a project. So we just did it and I've been making them ever since. Uh, I, I got that hydro shrink. So <clears throat> I really enjoy shrinking shit. It's just, again, it's like a cool processy thing. That's just like miraculous to me. So I'll just, I just shrink everything. Uh, once you open this stuff, it's only good for like six months. So I buy a jar of it. It's like, I got to use it. So I just, <laughs> just fucking shrink everything and then I shrink it again and shrink it again. <laughs> Now, do you just pour that like in a container and, and let your mold absorb it? Like, you actually cast with it. It's a, uh, it's a resin. It's really trippy, dude. It's uh, it, it's like a, it's not hydrophobic. It's the opposite of hydrophobic. So you mix it with water, and it cures in like thirty seconds. And then over a couple of weeks, the the water evaporates and just it just shrinks. So like no matter depending on how much water you put in, it's how small it gets. And then it ends up like here. Yeah, yeah. That's an incredible cure time to work with. The 30 seconds is insane, especially if you want to put it under pressure. It's like incredibly stressful. <laughs> uh, this is a full size uh, food fighter's head. And this is one that I'm shrinking. Where's his face? Here's his face. I didn't, I didn't realize he was that big. I'll be honest. Holy. Yeah, now they're big. Yeah. So this one's going to be like a third of the size when he's done. Let's see. Oops, shit. So he's just like rubber. He's like this indestructible rubber. And that's the hydro span or the hydro shrink. So then I just cast that. I've never heard of anybody using that. That's crazy. Yeah, look at this. So like, uh... And of course it doesn't affect your mold in any way. No, no, it's just a casting medium. So like this is this is that Cyclopto guy. So he was like, he's like three and a half inches, and then I hydro shrinked him and he just ends up being this little rubbery. And you cast them and you end up with uh, you know, guys like that. You can see how that get addicting. I know, right? And then I just end up making it's like, oh, colors, you know, color. <laughs> <laughs> like those helping hands, dude. I made like, I made like hundreds of them, the little ones, because I was just like, yay! <laughs> it's like Christmas. <laughs> you have to make one then like make a mold for it to then be able to have two of them to make a mold of the two like how did- uh i just made i just cast one and then made 10 of those and then made a mold of 10 yeah oh, okay yeah i was thinking about making a bunch of them but uh my resin sets pretty fast i've only got a couple minute pot life so i could really only fill one of these before it starts to set i can only fill 10 before it starts to set other people use slower resin, you know, like uh, 325 takes like five hours to cure, where you have like a five hour pot life. But I'm too impatient. I'm <laughs> like my rubber takes an uh, hour and a half, plastic takes 20 minutes. That's like perfect for me. Yeah, even when you mentioned the 20 minutes earlier, I was kind of, I, I thought that was pretty quick um, cure time. It's fast. Any reason, just because of the patience or? Uh, it's just, it's just fun, yeah. It's like, it's like Christmas, you know, it's like, how long can you sit and stare at a Christmas present? You know, like you make something, you put it in the pot. I want like instant gratification. You know, I want, I want to open it up quick. Yay, I don't want to wait five hours. It's like sending something off, you know, sending box tops off and wait six weeks. So as somebody who collects uh, minis, are you also one of the people who is like classic for wanting the monster in my pocket? You know, I was never a huge mint guy. Uh, I do have a bunch of them, but they're all commons. Uh, yeah, I never, I was never really, a part of, I moved to Mexico when I was a kid, when I was like 13. So I started smoking pot and drinking and I didn't, I wasn't really into toys at that time. I was like, I, 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 I was in Mexico city. There weren't, I would, there weren't really toys. So, uh, 
And that's like, that's when Monster in My Pocket were around. Like I missed that whole pocket there. So I moved back to the States. <laughs> but I didn't know there was a whole toy scene. Like if I knew there were kick-ass toys in Mexico at the time, I would have been getting them. Right. Because I was actually going to ask next, like, would you have been seeing almost like the bootlegs at the time they were appearing? But probably I guess I, I would have, yeah. It's like I was at the like street markets and stuff. Like I'm sure there were bins of bootleg toys around. I just wasn't. I was doing other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't collecting toys at the time. <laughs> what would you say is like your um, like go-to focus at this point when it comes to collecting? Oh, oh man, I'm all over the place. Uh, uh, I like weird shit. Uh, I, 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 mostly, I mostly collect, uh, like played with toys. So I get stuff at thrift stores or flea market. Uh, I don't spend money on toys. I'm not going to, I'm not going to spend hundreds of dollars on anything uh, unless I really, really want it. But I'm not going to pay hundreds of dollars for a vintage toy. <clears throat> Even though no matter how much I want it, I'm not going to, I'm not going to spend hundreds of dollars on a vintage toy. Uh, but I have, I don't have a lot of room in my house. So I have a lot of bins, I have tons of bins of fucking toys that I don't play with, that I wish I could play with. Uh, but it's so fun to go and open those bins and just go through them because it's like, oh yeah. So I kind of like having them away. I mean, I do have some stuff out. Uh, I actually just had guys in my house working. So I was like, fuck, put everything away. So I put everything in boxes. I haven't put everything back up yet, but uh, I don't know. it's a total disaster. Like I haven't even, like this is my workspace. I cleaned it up for you because it was a fucking <laughs> disaster. It was my little cab, my little casting booth, my little uh, ventilation booth my bench and then I just have a bunch of shit over here. This is where I just like manically make stuff and throw it on the shelf. <laughs> bunch of molds, I got tons of boxes of old molds. And then this is like, I got, a, I got a bunch of shit over here that I just haven't put back up because the guys came in and I freaked out and hit everything. <laughs> like, it's like I panic and I was like, oh, I don't want to touch my shit. It's so easy to pick shit up and put it in your pocket. <laughs> it's so tempting. <laughs> it's just like, I have so many little I mean, my shelves are just like hundreds of minis you know it's like i don't know i probably wouldn't notice if a handful of them were gone you know <laughs> and then, that's one of the worries <laughs> not that it would even matter you know it's like if i wouldn't miss them fucking who cares but it it still matters <laughs> but i'm gonna grill you with questions on top of the questions i've already been grilling you with so what would be the oldest toy that you currently own and I got a lot of toys. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I got a lot of toys. Uh, <laughs> oh, you know what it is? It's probably, check this out, check this shit out. This is, this might not be my oldest, but it's fucking old and I just got it. So this is like a, this is really fucking cool. Oh, it smells. <laughs> I literally just got it like yesterday. So this is a mold. I think it's from a Has, Hasbro. It's like 1965, I think called motorized monsters and they would send along a little like a wind-up mechanism and and uh like squeeze vials of rubber goo and they sent these two-part molds it's like the fucking they would make this monster and then snap them onto the motorized parts so it's really cool it's like a real aluminum mold of this crazy monster look at his face it's so cool i don't know if you can see him or not yeah i, I was actually gonna ask like how the heck did you end up landing a steel mold from canada like i don't even know it's it's something they sold you know it's like a toy from 1965 or something and uh i was just on ebay like i searched monster molds or something and fucking this thing came up and i was like oh it was like 20 bucks you know so I could bring back a, a killer toy like that. That's like, probably hasn't been seen in like 40 years, you know? And make it in cool materials. That is nuts, man. It's a really, really, really cool. That's a cool collection piece to have. Yeah, neat. So I'll, I'll use it. I'll make it, you know, I'll, I'll pour some rubber in it and make some monsters. And So I actually have a lot of things like that, like old mold making. Mattel made a bunch of like vacuum forming toys and like, uh, mold making toys from the 60s that, that got uh, banned because they'd light on fire and burn houses down. But they're really cool. Like I have a die cast one that melts little metal beads into molds and, and just the design of the machines themselves are really, really cool. I've, I've never really heard of anybody else. Like, I don't know anybody who collects like the molds and stuff like that. What? 
that's freaking cool, man. It's cool. Like they produced mold. They produced these awesome, like really well done metal molds. You know, and like that that die cast kit. Oh god, oh, yeah, I'm afraid to actually have something. Maybe. So this is like there's a game called uh, called Chomp or Chew. It's like a, a freaking weird board game made by the FDA, which is totally weird. The the Food and Drug Administration in the United States made a board game, totally bizarre. But it had these cool little creatures called Chogs in it, and that's a Chog that I made out of metal using that old Mattel diecast kit. And that's like they were they were putting these things in kids' hands in the '60s, like <laughs> fucking make a metal toy, like melt metal and pour it in this mold, you know? It's like or like vacuform something, like like I think that made a whole generation of makers. They're like, wow, I could I could use a vacuum forming tool, you know, or I could. I can make something out of molten metal, or I can, I could use these two weird goops and mix them together in a mold and make a toy, you know. And it's like now we're in our forties and fifties and like making shit you know? <laughs> with modern tools. You know? <laughs> when when you melted the metal for that, did you use the actual? Like yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it has this cool like safety dome on it, and I was like, eh, take that off, you know. <laughs> Jeez, man. I can only imagine the chemicals that probably came out. Uh, oh, it gets so hot. It's like the wires are all burnt and like melted. It's like, it's like of course it would light on fire, especially in the hands of a seven-year-old. It's like, what are you fucking thinking, Mattel? Like, <laughs> but yeah, it's awesome. It's fun. Hell yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> we all got our scars, you know? <laughs> what would be the dream job, out of curiosity? Oh, man, I have the dream job right now, actually. My job is great. Uh, Art-wise? Uh, I like making. I, I don't know. I wouldn't. I don't want making toys to be a job. I don't want any anything creative, artistic to be a job. Uh, so it's like I got. I got a great job right now. I love my job. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't want a job. I wouldn't want anything to anything related to a job around my art. <laughs> I can respect that. Keep it separated. That's my. It's my. This is my outlet. Definitely. Probably not the answer you're looking for. <laughs> no, honestly, that's that's probably one of the best answers you can give. I mean, I, I I I'm so grateful to have that luxury. It's like I have a job. I just I just do this as creative expression, and I sell it. Just to I mean, it covers the cost. I'm a failed artist because I used to give all my shit away, and it's like I kept giving it away and making it. Giving it was like, what am I doing? You know. So if I can cover costs and fucking make stuff and like get it out of me and make people smile, fuck. What else is there? You know. Not a job. It's sure as hell not a job. <laughs> That's an optimistic way of looking at it. Absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, do you have a favorite toy line? Uh, uh, I like the weird. I like the weird, obscure shit. I like. I like. Uh, uh, I like. I like. Uh, I collect a lot of Ghostbusters companions because they're weird. I like a lot of the sidekicks. Uh, because they're like the designer sculpts that they got to slip in with their production pieces, and they're usually weird as hell. Uh, I got a whole case full of Ghostbusters companions. I like the weird stuff. I like the stuff that's like, like why the fuck would they make that? Like the stuff that I make. It's like, <laughs> it's like wow, somebody made that, and like that's cool. You know, <laughs> somebody thought that was a good idea. <laughs> Clearly, it's not. But <laughs> the, the weirder, the better. Sometimes, for sure. Yeah, I, I like that whole uh, weird, gross phase of the '80s, you know. Slime. Yeah, just I remember digging eyeballs out of slime buckets and worms, and it's like, how cool is it that that had mass market appeal? Like, that's what toy makers were getting paid to do: is make, just twist, like dissect shit and take stuff out of slime. And I like the like weird Korean bootleg shit or the weird, weirder the better, you know. What would you say is your least favorite part of the process? Uh, clean up the finishing. It's like, I just like to make stuff. And then it's like, I look at this pile of stuff and it's like, I gotta sand it and gloss it and finish it. It's not that I don't enjoy it. It's just, it's like the dirty part of it, you know? I don't like a lot of dust. So I try and make my molds as clean as possible and try and do as little sanding as possible. So that's that's just like, that's work, you know? <laughs> that's, that's the work yeah. part of it for me. <laughs> Especially when you're doing production, like, like if you got a hundred or something, it's like, oh man, I gotta. I didn't even think about that on all the little hamburger helpers or on the helping hands. Well, that the, the Akamura one with the six hands, like, fuck, dude. <laughs> like, that was a fucking grind. Like, six six hands per figure. Like, that's that's seven pieces per figure. Like, 
That took me fucking forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. All good. I learned a lot. Uh, made some partnerships. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I didn't even think about that actually. Yeah, like when you're when you're talking about the piece and removing all the flashing on the six individual hands, the weapons. Yep. Cleaning them up, and then like you know, one out of every three of those little hands had a bubble in it, so right in the fucking trash. You know. <laughs> I don't sell stuff with bubbles. I don't. I don't do bubbles. I don't do gaps. I try and try and get everything clean. You know, so I got a lot of seconds. <laughs> I got boxes of seconds. <laughs> yeah, I believe it, man. I, I, I'm. You said you toss right in the trash, but would you never consider putting together almost like a bag of, of some of those things? I, yeah, by trash, I don't mean trash. I, I, throw okay. them, I throw them in a box. I got boxes of seconds. Uh, I, I don't. I don't want them out. I don't want them out there. And I don't want things with holes in them. And, I just don't want them out there. So I don't know what I'll do with them. Maybe I'll put them in a block of resin or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's like I let a few out and I've seen them come back and people are like, hey, did you make this? And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, man. So like, I did. Let me give you a new one that's better. You know, it's like, <laughs> you shouldn't have that. <laughs> so I don't let seconds leave. I'm super anal. I want my product to be the best that I can make it. So yeah. people are paying money. It's like money's hard to come by. People are paying their money for it. So I already feel, you know, charging anything for tiny little toys it's like ugh, it's like makes me cringe to have to charge for it you know <laughs> i don't know why and that's why i get back and i just end up giving everything away and i, I can't do it but yeah bad habit uh, i'm not a businessman i guess it's just a hobby so but then at the end of the year i get like a tax bill it's like oh you all this mo you owe all this money for selling toys and i'm like what <laughs> it's not a job it's a fucking hobby art and capitalism do not go together organically i know man it's like paypal it's like PayPal reports you to the IRS and then you got to pay tax. It's like, dude, it's like, I'm not, in, I'm not, up, I have the luxury of this just being a hobby. So I'm not, I'm not fucking cutthroat douchebag competing, you know, uh, you know, it's like, I'm just, just making toys, man. <laughs> That's all I want to do is I just want to make toys. <laughs> What's one of the first toys that you remember ever getting? Uh, I used to be really into Micronauts when I was a kid. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm old, dude. I, I turned 51 last weekend, so I'm old. Uh, so it's like 1970, 76 or 77. So, so Micronauts, uh, Micronauts came out right around with Star Wars. So I saw the, I stood in line for the original Star Wars when it came out, like opening night. So like, I was seven. So it's like, bam, you know, like action figures happened. Like Star Wars action figures made it happen. It's like, so it was like, fuck, you know, uh, <laughs> So yeah, I had Micronauts, I had all of Star Wars, I had, I had everything, dude. Like, because it was all just coming out. But then I would move, and I would never see it again. <laughs> uh, a lot of stuff I would, uh, you know, box tops, collect box tops, serial box tops, and send away and get it. A lot of that kind of toys. Uh, yeah, mostly. I think my earliest toys were probably Micronauts that I really remember, like fully having immersive, imaginative play. You know, like. Like, I used to bring them in the bathtub. I would like, I mean, just like every were with me all the time, you know, all the play sets and vehicles. And were they like a, a full figure arm articulating, or were they like a, a mini? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I happen to have them right here. This is one of the first ones. This is this is the battle screen, dude. So this thing it forms like a hundred different ships and. It's like the wings were fucking guns that shot rubber things, and but the dudes were these guys. A couple, in here. A couple of broken ones in here. These guys are called time travelers. <clears throat> They're cool as hell, super articulated. Oh, rad as hell, man! Like chromed heads, full comic book behind them. Totally immersive. So they had vehicles and play sets and. I mean, all different die cast ones. And Holy cow. Yeah, they're rad, dude. So you see on the front, it's like they have all these different possibilities, you know? Oh, more on the side, make all these different things. So it's just like endless creativity, you know? Like, and lots of stickers, you know, lots of stickers to put on and build them. And it's all just parts, you know, just all these different parts snapped together with magnets and pegs. And Holy little God. motorized, like has a motor with wheels, and you have a little remote control. Fucking crazy, dude! Yeah, here's a remote. Like, 
a magnetic cord on it. This is shit back then, man. <laughs> yeah, that's a, an intense piece of machinery. <laughs> that was my first. <laughs> I think, like, really, like, like, really into it, you know? Dang. I'll admit it, like, I can't believe that I haven't like heard that be talked about more. Yeah, but look at the instructions. It's beautiful, you know, just like crazy. I'm like, oh, put your dude in here. Yeah, it's killer. That's almost it's like it's almost like ahead of its time. Yeah, dude. It's, I don't even know what year it was. It must have been 77, 76. I was a little kid. Holy. But that's what got me going, you know. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Friggin' cool toy line. It still does, as you can tell. <laughs> I'm surprised we don't see more people um, bootleg those figures at all. Like, I've, I've never even really seen them in the market now. Uh, I think like uh, like Plastic Geek. I think he did some. Something or, very close, yeah. Very close, yeah. Uh, like uh, Titty Beans does kind of Micronaut looking guys. I don't know if they're Micronauts or not. It, 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 they don't seem to, I mean, more though, you don't see anything with like, one, you don't see those peg articulations like that. You're not going to oh, see right, right. crazy articulation. Right. You also don't really seem to see like um, a chrome head on a slender, heroic, uh -huh. like that. Like, right. it's so cool, huh? Dang. It's like, and it's like, he's a time traveler. It's like, that's what a time traveler would look like, right? <laughs> you have a chrome head and a cool translucent body and super articulated, you know, even the hands and. I'm going to go down a rabbit hole for that later. Or yeah. <laughs> What's one of the, the weirdest things that you've ever casted? Uh, uh, the video nasty stuff. Uh, we did a we did a new one. Uh, I don't think I have one here. So uh, this was one that we did for video nasties. Uh, uh, Mildest Midas Wilder Cheap Toy Man uh, dreamed of it. It is uh, uh, Murder Wave Massacre is what we called it. There's a, a really bad B movie called uh, Microwave Massacre. So Midas had. Uh, a guy named Jim Rogers, who's actually a very famous sculptor. He sculpted like some of the Ninja Turtles. Uh, he sculpted some of the army ants. He did like a bunch of starting lineup figures. So he sculpted this insane piece. Uh, it was three pieces, a uh, microwave box with a head on a plate in it, complete with uh, like a microwave uh, thermometer stuck in its head. I don't know if you can see it very well. Yeah. Uh, the Cable coming up now, yeah. So it's got like a, a thermometer plugged into its head with a cord that goes out. It used to have a little tail, but that broke off. Um, and it goes into this microwave uh, and it has a door. I can't find a door on it, so it's three pieces and it's cool as shit. Let's see, Let's see or not. Oh, it, great, it glows like a motherfucker, but it's a really neat effect like uh, to have a head in a microwave. <laughs> And it just looks just like the cover of the movie. Uh, the movie, the cover of the movie, the VHS box has a microwave with a head and a thermometer stuck in it, just like this. So it's a brilliant piece. Uh, I only made like six or seven of them. And I don't know where they are. I didn't keep any for myself. I just have broken ones. <laughs> I, I don't know why I never, I never keep anything I make. <laughs> but anyway. that's, uh, I don't know. I just like to move on. Someday I'm sure I'll regret it, but I just like to make stuff and then move on to the next. So, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure I'm going to regret, like right now, I regret not having one. I wish I would have one for myself. <laughs> but, oh well. <laughs> There's plenty more toys. Well, I guess that's something you could probably still cast yourself one if you wanted. Yeah, yeah, I still have the molds. I could do it. I have people begging me for them, and I'm just like, eh, it's not really my toy. Uh, <laughs> people are like, dude, make me one. I'm like, I can't. You know, I don't want to disrespect him. It's his toy. I said, if you talk to him and he tells me I can make you one, I'm happy to, but otherwise I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fuck anybody, you know? Yeah, no, best position to be in for sure. Just yeah. Neutral. But I don't wanna, I don't wanna destroy the molds either, so. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time. <laughs> Hold on to them for a while, just in yeah. case. Yeah, just in case. <laughs> the last one, what would you say has probably been like the longest session that you've ever spent casting? Oh, oh, oh man. Ah, uh, like in one session, one, one stream, <laughs> <laughs> or like one manic episode. <laughs> call me, call me. Uh, I don't know, probably just like a few days of just like, just like full on, so psyched about a project of just going and going and going and bugging my family crazy with, look at this, look at this, look at this. And 
you know, getting up in the middle of the night and working on it. Like I'm a pretty bad insomniac. So like, if I can't sleep, I'll just get up and start making stuff, you know, get up at three o'clock in the morning and start my day and pass it. Yeah, probably. I mean, like I said, I get really excited about it. Pro I don't work on stuff until I get really excited. And then I get really excited, really, really excited. And I work on it, work on it, get it all done. And and then I get eh, the next, then it's just kind of like all these helping, like these things. Like I got really excited about making these. And I was like, yeah, cool. So I, I made a bunch of them and they're just sitting on my shelf. It's like, like what am I doing? <laughs> I should sell them or something. It's like, <laughs> I don't know, they're just fucking sitting here. <laughs> what am I doing? Bro? It's like, but I just like to make them, like I said. So I just, I like that flow, like when that an energy is, is flowing, it's just like, there's nothing like it. Really fun day. I try, I try to embrace it. <laughs> is, is the casting probably your favorite part of the whole process? Totally, yeah. yeah. I, I actually love making molds too. Like uh, making the molds is so technical and so, uh, just so detail oriented and so forward thinking that I, I find that really enjoyable. Which is weird, because uh, like during it, I don't really enjoy it, but I do, which is kind of weird. <laughs> it's oh like God. I'll spend hours blocking out a mold, you know, and then like, fuck, that took a really long time. But I look up, and it's been hours, and like it seemed like ten minutes, you know. So I guess I enjoy it. <laughs> but then I look at a mold, and I'm like, fuck, that's gonna be really hard to do. Like, Ugh. But then I start doing it, and six hours later, I'm like done with it. You know? <laughs> Six hours later. Just, yeah, I just get in the flow. It's that, that flow. Your time just, things just, you know, it's a, it's a weird state. It's like a, a weird creative state where you just get in a bubble and everything just time flies. And I don't know. I, know, I can't really describe it. I, I believe the term's like um, to be grounded. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, it is. <laughs> that was, that's what it's like to be grounded? <laughs> well, because well, a lot of times, um, in meditation and stuff, the whole idea is to become like in the now and not focus on what's going on and to be grounded. That's exactly what it's like. I've always, I've always pictured it as like a, like a, I keep calling it a flow because it's like this, this flow of energy. And it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to just, I don't want to, I don't want to disturb the flow. I just want to let it go. So it's like, I don't, God, it's so hard to describe. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to stifle it. I don't want to force it in any way. I don't know. That's why, that's why I don't want it to be a job because that would like, change the direction of my flow or like shape the flow funnel or something and i just wanted to to just flow it's like i gotta get that shit out for me you know <laughs> yeah i'm curious do you do a, a two-part mold normally or do you normally do like a, a single dump mold or a pour mold uh i usually it depends uh if i can get away with a cut mold i will uh, but i do a lot of two-part molds just because i want to control uh the, the part line uh, but cut molds are much easier uh, especially, so I use this cool uh, translucent uh, rubber. So it's like I cast a bootleg, I could see it in there. So I can cut, like, I can cut right along where I want it to part. Whereas it's like this blue, like you cast something in like blue rubber. It's like you have no fucking clue where to cut. So I used to like put magic marker, uh, like, yeah, I gotta cut it kind of there. But this stuff, it's like awesome. You put it up to a light and it's like I can see it. So. Uh, if I can get away with the two, uh, one part cut mold, I will, because the, the uh, uh, seam lines are, are usually really, really good. You usually don't really get seam lines from a cut mold. Uh, they're usually really unnoticeable. Uh, I know some people that only do cut molds, but I like making the molds. It's a weird thing. And some molds, some you have to, some you have to make a cut, uh, a two-piece mold. You, know, you just can't, you can't do a, a cut mold. Get all the vents and stuff, you know. Anytime you're dealing with vents, or like this guy here trying to get through that. Uh, yeah. Leg. Yep. Yep. Or like any of the little, those. Oh man, those little hands. <laughs> oh, my hair's falling out. <laughs> man, honestly, um, like I, I thought they were dope. I thought they were cool. Definitely let me know if you end up dropping more, because then I'll, I'll, I'll push them to all the homies about how dope they are. Because. Oh, thanks, dude. <laughs> I was actually gonna do. Oh, uh, I was just filling in his back. I was gonna cast him without the extra hands. Cause it's such a fucking killer little figure. It's like, he doesn't really need the extra hands. He's like just such a killer standalone little figure. And I can crank those out, you know, without those hands, like without making six <laughs> hands per figure, <laughs> then I can sell it for like seven bucks or whatever, you know, eight bucks instead of 20 or whatever. Hard to say, 
You would. You've been in it a lot longer than I. You would know a lot better than I. I don't know. I don't know anything, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I got a whole box full of Mork and Mindy's if you want, or Mork and Monkeys if you want. <laughs> you know, I I think I'm like. I'm gonna have to be uh, hitting you up soon. It was funny. I didn't expect it at all, but even the roommate was the one who was saying, uh, "Hey, if you go to Oregon from him, I like the Mork and Monkey." And I was like, "You know, it's Mork and Monkey, not right." <laughs> yeah, that's what I like. I was like, "Okay." Why would anybody make that? <laughs> it caught me by surprise because I was kind of like, just like, you saw this, right? You see the backer for it, like taking it in. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I like your friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, if you don't mind my asking, yeah, like I know you said you just kind of like things to make you laugh. But, like, where does Mork and Monkey come from? Like, just this. <laughs> that one was a. Uh, I got it at a flea market. It was a. It's a, a painting kit. It came with a Mork and with Mork and Mindy figures and a little like six little pots of paint and a paintbrush. And you're supposed to paint them. And as I was casting up Mindy, she looked like a fucking monkey. The sculpt was so bad. I'm like she looks like a fucking monkey, not Mindy. And I'm like. Mork and, Mork and Monkey, of course. Like, 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 Obviously. Like, yes, yeah, duh. Like, right on brand. And I told Mario, and Mario's like, holy shit. So he did the art. And it was just like, we were both just cracking up. And I don't even care if nobody bought them. It's like, I laughed so hard making those things. Showing my wife just cracking up. I can, oh. That will be something that I'm going to I'm gonna have to start spreading to the homies. Like, okay, so if you go to the website that says sold out, just, just DM him. Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe he's going to tuck the way <laughs> Or I'll cast it. If I got the mold, I'll make you one. You know, it's like... Dang. See, and that's something I don't think a lot of us um, collectors realize, too, is that a lot of times you guys still have the mold kicking around. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. I get down on that, man. Yeah. So it's 11, uh, 1123. I don't want to hold you up too much longer. Yeah, my work is bugging me. <laughs> work is expecting me to work. <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> Anything that you'd want to be, uh, tell us about or leave us off with before I let you go? No, I just want to express my gratitude, man. I think you're you're doing a wonderful thing. Uh, it's killer, man. Likewise, man. I, it's been such a pleasure chatting with you. Honestly, it's really yeah. fun up today, man. And I really, really appreciate all you're doing in the community with all the work that you're putting oh, up for me with Minifigure Militia. And I dig it, dude. Absolutely. Likewise, dude. Anytime you want to chat, I'm always around. So I've enjoyed this a lot. I, like, I, like I said, I just fucking ramble. So <laughs> <laughs> when it comes down to toys, there's no such thing as rambling, man. I just love talking. I'm talking about toys, so it's fun. And get down. Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna have to do this again soon, sooner than later. Yeah, sure, dude. I'm always around. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much, man. Try to enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Absolutely. You too, dude.